Can you guys hear me? Okay, so I'm going to explain this up front because this is not a normal session. Okay, uh, I pitched this idea to Microsoft way back when. They ended up making it a 45 minute session, which is great because we actually get to, to do this. But I do not have a prescriptive formula for you. I don't think there is such a thing. The idea of this, and if you read the description of the session, this is meant to be a group therapy session. It really is, let's, let's talk. Everybody, you know, all of you who are here are either interested in running a user group, running a user group, looking for ideas, looking to join a user group, whatever it is, none of us should be that shy. So hopefully, uh, we'll all be able to share some ideas. I'll share some of the ones that I have, but the idea behind this is really for us to learn from each other. It's not, I have an exact formula and I'm gonna tell you exactly how to do it. Um, uh, you, you'd call BS on that pretty quick, I think. <laughs> Wanted to give you the preface up front because I don't want to disappoint anybody. Um, I do that enough to my wife. So um, I think uh, I have a handheld mic. There are mics in the center. So like, uh, because this is being streamed, because it's being recorded, we need to use the mic. Um, that, that's just how it goes. I can't just, we, we need to be able to hear the, the, the conversation amongst ourselves. So if you can, like we're all, everybody has done a great job of ringing around the aisles here. So if you have something to say, pop up to a mic. I don't intend on just diatribing this entire thing. I intend to, this to be a conversation amongst us. So it's a little bit of an odd format for that, and I apologize for that in advance. But hopefully when we walk out of this room 45 minutes later, you walk out with three or four or five good ideas from other user group leaders who've done this. I've run a number of user groups at this point. Uh, I've left leaving, running a number of user groups at this point because I've moved around um, quite a bit, but really want this to be something that is beneficial to everybody in the room. So hopefully, uh, you know, by joining us today, you're here to engage. If you're not, I completely respect that. That's fine too, just come and listen. Um, but that's what it's about. So um, I'll go ahead and dive in if this thing wants to work. It doesn't. It's a good thing I don't have a whole lot of slides. So this is me. My name is Jason Himmelstein. I am your facilitator for the group hug of the century today. Um, I am a, uh, I'm a Rackspace employee. Sorry for not wearing my speaker shirt. Uh, I've been speaking for five days now. This is my sixth session. Uh, and after a certain point, it's gamey. So I needed a fresh, uh, a fresh shirt. I can only wear the same shirt two days, and that's about it. So um, I work for Rackspace. Uh, Rackspace is a big uh, encouragement of the community. Uh, we've hosted user groups in, at Rackspace for a long time. Uh, they allow me the ability to come out and do pretty much anything to encourage the community that I want to go off and do. I get to go speak and do all sorts of crazy cool stuff. Microsoft has honored me for the past couple of years with the Microsoft MVP award. Uh, I'm a BI guy, uh, so I've done some BI user group stuff. I'm also a SharePoint guy. I was an Exchange guy way back in the day. Uh, before that was Windows Servers and Active Directory. So I've been doing all sorts of Microsoft technologies for about 20 years now. Uh, I also was a youth group uh, director back before that uh, for 10 years, um, doing informal education. So for me, helping people teaching is, is really a passion of mine. That's why I come to these things. That's why I love to do what I get to do. Um, I'm also, uh, I just moved back to Texas a couple of, you know, about 18 months ago, uh, and we've, we're working on getting our user group there bigger and better um, and trying to do some different things with it. We've had some successes, we've had some failures, and I'm gonna open Komodo and have that conversation with you guys today. Uh, that's my blog and my Twitter handle. Uh, feel free to tweet if you want. Uh, so this is designed to be group therapy. It really is, that's what we're here for. We're here to talk about stuff. So um, when you have something to say, please share with us who you are, what, why you're here, what, what, what you came to, to learn about, whether it's about user groups or whether it's about other technologies. Uh, so when you come up to the mic, make sure you tell us who you are um, and what user groups you're involved in. I think it'll be very helpful for the other people to hear it. Um, and so just from a definition perspective, what's a user group? I've seen it a number of different ways. Um, personally, I've seen it really successful when it's a group of users who all come together to say what they want to hear. Uh, up in New Hampshire, I, was, I helped run the user group up there for a number of years. Uh, the person who took over for me is here in the room, which is awesome. I love her, she's great. Um, but what we frequently did was we asked our attendees, what do you want? 
It's not, well, this is what I'm going to go off and find people to come and talk about this month. It's, what are you interested in hearing? So for me, it's, a user group really is a collection of people coming together to try and learn something together. It's a group of users of a technology, uh, whatever that technology happens to be. For me, it's always been SharePoint as my core. Um, so whether it's IT Pro, Dev, or end user, and we sort of had to flex that a lot uh, in the mix. You have to find the definition of what your user group is and what you want it to be. What's the charter of what you guys are trying to accomplish with your group? And that way you can stick to a mission. And that's, I've seen a lot of user groups fail because they tried to morph without the attendees buying in. Um, and so defining that, what is your user group? What are, what are you about is really important. Uh, I think that the Dallas user group, uh, the SharePoint user group has done a great job of that. Um, you know, I'll talk more about that here in a little bit. Um, and you know, I want to talk about also what have uh, we found to be successful. So we can talk about the pain a lot. And everybody likes to share their pain. We all need a hug every once in a while. But what have you found to be successful? What have you found that works? So I'll spark some of that conversation. Uh, I'm just running through the, some of the questions just so you guys can get an idea of what we're looking to talk about, how we go through it. We'll see how, what, what the questions look like as we go. Um, and what have the biggest hurdles been for your user groups? Okay, so some of the, some of the thought-provoking stuff that I want to I want to talk through, um, and then ultimately I want to share with you a couple of resources, uh, a couple of tips and tricks that I have. Um, I don't know if this resonates with anybody. Consistency of meetings. Um, we have, you know, struggled when we've had to move meetings around. Um, for a while, we you know, said, if we have a great speaker coming through, we'll just move a meeting. Whatever it takes to be able to get that great speaker who's going to draw people in, man, that would be great. The mistake that we've made, personally, that I've made, is not keeping my consistent meeting as well. So if you have an awesome speaker coming through who you know, everybody wants to hear from, and they're willing to volunteer their time, see if you can get a second meeting on the books. You know, people are, if people are really excited to come out and hear somebody speak, get that meeting on the books and then also, you know, keep your consistent meeting because people rely on it. You know, they're, they're used to it and they get frustrated when we don't have consistency of meetings, right? So from a location perspective, make it repeatable, make it something that they're used to and that they can have as a predictable thing. Uh, one of the things that we did in New Hampshire way back was we were alternating locations. Uh, we had a college that would host us periodically and would do it for free. And then we had the Microsoft store that really wanted us to come there and host a meeting. And so we sort of hodgepodged it back and forth for a little bit. And we realized that wasn't working because people would show up at the wrong location. Because they were just used to every Thursday night, I'd show up at this time and there's pizza and there's soda and I, I'm, I hear something I, I'm not used to hearing about, whether it's a topic I'm really interested in or not, I come together and I get together with my SharePoint friends and I hear what's going on. And we used to get 20 people to a meeting and then we started alternating locations willy-nilly and it kind of threw things off. And one of the things that we decided to do at that point was we switched it and we said, you know what, we love this location that we have, but we really want to support the Microsoft Store too. So what we decided to do was Every, on the quarter, we would switch to the Microsoft Store. So it became repeatable for people. They could put it in their calendars they knew. Two months, we would do it at the college. One month, we would go to the Microsoft Store. And honestly, the Microsoft Store is a hard venue. Does anybody use the Microsoft Stores for their, for their meetups or for their user groups? Yeah. I, the one that we had in, uh, up in New Hampshire, it's got the open walls, and the staff is walking through continuously. It's a little bit of a hard space. But you know what? It's free. It's consistent. Microsoft will always let you have it. As long as you get on their books, they will give you that space to use. AV equipment's already there, and they're really kind. So it's something that if you have a Microsoft Store, oh, is it working now? Awesome, thank you. Uh, if, you if you have a Microsoft Store in your area, you just need to go in and meet the people there. Tell them, hey, I run a user group. They will say, let me get the community person who runs our community area. We'd love to get you on the books. So make sure that if you're looking for a venue, it's a great place to start, especially as you grow. But if you're going to have 50 people in a meeting, that Microsoft Store space gets a little bit tight and a little bit tough, right? So as good as it is, it's one of those things that gets a little bit harder to do. Um, from an agenda perspective, 
Uh, we switched up, so I moved to San Antonio 18 months ago, uh, and when I landed, uh, I, I got an email that said, so when are we running SharePoint Saturday? I was like, I, ha I haven't had my boxes delivered yet, guys. Let me, give, me, give me a little bit of time. So SharePoint Saturday is a community-run event. For those of you who don't know, I know there are SQL Saturdays as well. I'm not sure if there are other communities that do that also, that have a, an event like what we do with the SharePoint Saturday events. But SharePoint Saturdays are a community-run event. It is free to attendees. Some of the SharePoint Saturday organizations have started splitting off and uh, and I'll talk to that here in just a minute. But what we've seen be really successful is vendors pay to come and exhibit. They get a certain amount of, uh, of things that they are entitled to as a part of that. An email list, they get a, maybe a speaking session. They get an opportunity to address everybody. Maybe, they, you, know, maybe, maybe you have a keynote opportunity. Tiered pricing for, for the vendors to come. But the attendees are absolutely free. And we've had really good success in a lot of markets doing this. Uh, they are all over the world at this point. So if you heard uh, Jeff Teeper's sub keynote the other day, he talked about SharePoint Saturdays. He's been to a couple of them. He's come out and keynoted a couple of them. You know, we've had Microsoft people from all over come out and keynote these things for us. And people really love to come out and take part in that. Um, but as far as that, the agenda side of it is concerned, um, because I've, I've diverted from this, and I really want to get to just letting you guys talk. Um, an agenda is really important. When I got to San Antonio, uh, they, first they wanted to know when were we doing a SharePoint Saturday, and then the second conversation was, what do we need to do to fix the user group? Well, we had two user groups in San Antonio that were similar. One was the SharePoint user group, and one was the .NET user group. The .NET user group community doesn't really care quite as much about the SharePoint side of it all the time, and the SharePoint side doesn't always care as much about the .NET side of things, but there is a decent amount of crossover, uh, about a quarter of the group that comes from, to both things. So we decided, we actually got offered a free venue to go ahead and do it. Valero Energy is really uh, great, and they let us use their meeting space. It's a beautiful meeting space for free, and they said, you can have it, please come. And we said, well, can we have it for like three hours? I said, that's fine. So what we actually do is we have the two meetings on one night. And we have the pizza break in the middle so that people cross over. So if you don't really want to hear about the SharePoint side of things, you don't have to stay, come early for the SharePoint side of things. If you don't want to hear about the .NET stuff, you can leave early. You don't have to stay for the .NET stuff. And what we do is we always publish an agenda that says, this is when we're doing this, this is when we're doing this. And we put it out there on Meetup which is a great way to uh, get, help people find you, let them know which thing we're doing. You know, if we're going .NET first or SharePoint first, we try and get it out there at least a week in advance. But people always know that this is the night that we're doing this particular uh, group, and it works really well. So we get, uh, if we get a sponsor, which is hard to do, um, but you know, when we get a sponsor, they're able to pay for pizza for one meeting and we have it for everybody. So that works out really well from our perspective. Um, our numbers have started to dwindle a little bit, and we're working on picking those back up by getting, again, getting more consistent and having uh, different types of speakers. We've gone through microservices. Anybody familiar with microservices? I can tell you a lot about microservices at this point, because I've gone to enough you know, user groups hearing about microservices on the .NET side. Um, how do people find you, right? Um, We've done our own websites for a really long time. Having your own domain name is great. Um, being able to post pictures from your events, being able to post decks and whatnot. There are different uh, opportunities that you can find for free hosting of your sites. I know there, there, was, there are some hosting companies that do that. I know that Microsoft has, a, has some programs as well that traditionally they've given an Office 365 subscription. Uh, they have to prove that it's for a user group and things like that. But there's no better way to get the word out than putting it into the stream that people already go to find other stuff. So whether it's Eventbrite that you love or whether it's Meetup, honestly, we, we put things on both, okay? And we just have to go take a look and diff the tickets and say, okay, we've got 50 people registered. Uh, 12 of them are the same people. Okay, so we just don't order quite as much pizza. We're able to take a look at that. We look at the registration list. But however people can find you, Give them an opportunity to find you. Put your meetup, put your user group out there on every possible medium that you have it's available to you. There's no reason not to. People are going to go, but I've already signed up for that. Uh, okay, that's really not a problem. You know, finding that you, you know, something in two places is not a big issue. They can either register twice or they can just 
only register once, and that's perfectly fine. Um, LinkedIn groups, we have found conversations um, need to be driven in, linked up group, in, in uh, LinkedIn groups. Okay? Uh, go out and spark a conversation. Pu publish some, some new articles. Otherwise, the, meetup group, the LinkedIn group doesn't get looked at at all. Okay? Uh, try to keep recruiters out of your LinkedIn group if you can. And you know, block people where you need to if they're publishing content that doesn't belong. Okay, have an administrator who actually will take a look at it. You don't have to do it every hour, but you know, once a week, making sure that the conversation is happening properly because you don't want to push people away from it. Um, I will say that this is the thing that I think the Dallas user group for the Share, Dallas SharePoint user group has done really well. They figured out dev topics don't go over as well for their user group. Their user group looks for the end user conversations and some of the IT pro conversations. They have found that dev just doesn't fly in that, organ, in that group. So occasionally they will have a good dev topic, they'll have a good dev speaker, but they have to segment it off and get a separate room. So they'll run two rooms that night. Houston user group, uh, you know, doing a lot in Texas these days, Houston user group runs two meetings at once. You know, so they run two sessions at a time because they have the space. So where you have that opportunity, it's not a bad thing. Give people a choice, try and keep it different enough topics, so you're getting a diversity of people coming in. But figure out what works for you. You know, Azure, running an Azure user group has to be one of the harder things to do because it is such a broad platform. So figure out, we're gonna specialize in this side of Azure, we're gonna specialize in Azure IaaS versus we're gonna specialize in X, Y, and Z. You know, we're, it, it's just too big a platform. You're not gonna get consistency of attendance and you're just gonna pull your hair out. Part of why I'm losing it. If you can cohabitate, so if you, you know, uh, from a SharePoint perspective, we always have a lot of fun battling with our SQL friends, right? Just internally from a business perspective. But when it comes to user groups, there's a good cohabitation there because IT pros do cross over in that space. If you can find the ability to cohabitate with another user group where they're having stuff happening on the same night in the same location, the more people you can get to a meeting, the more you can have a single vendor who's providing food, you lower costs overall, and you get more people to come in. Oh, I'm going to this thing. Well, what's the, what are they talking about? Well, I'm going to, to SQL, but there's also a SharePoint thing. Hey, you're the SharePoint admin at the company. Why don't you come with me and we'll carpool? All of a sudden, we're green too. That's pretty cool, right? Um, one of the things that I have done in San Antonio, um, Near Valero, there is a Domino's Pizza. And I walked into Domino's Pizza and I said, hi, I'm running SharePoint Saturday here. I'm gonna need like 70 pies. What kind of a deal can you work for me? Uh, we have these meetings every month. I can promise you consistency. And they said, oh, you don't even need to work a deal with us. We already have, your, it's, it's for education, right? I said, yeah, we have an education deal. $6 for a large two topping pizza. Or sorry, one topping pizza. I went, I'm sorry, what? I've been paying how much for, for, this, for so long? Like, I've been paying 14 bucks a pie. Just by simply walking in and having the conversation, say, do you have any, you know, any benefits, any deals for education? We're a free education. We don't, you know, we get sponsors, but do you do anything? The grocery store near us said the same thing. Oh, you just need to submit us a letter. You know, tell us, you know, if you have a tax ID because you, you've incorporated and it's a not-for-profit, We've got, we can absolutely, we'll donate stuff to you. My jaw dropped. Okay, so you can get freebies out there. You just need to go talk to some of the vendors nearby and, you know, see if they have anything like that. If they don't, then what have you lost? The gas to drive there and, you know, five minutes of your time. But we now have saved, it's a 50% savings for us for every meeting because we've talked to this Domino's that's nearby and they deliver. So we tip the, you know, the driver really well, you know, and they, they deliver, it's really great. So I mean, there are opportunities out there that you just have to go out and find and just go and ask the questions. Again, as a user group leader, you're sh probably not shy, right? Just go out, you have to embrace it and say, what can I do and, you know, and, and we, we've done this, we've gone out to dinner places and I would ask, hey, do you guys do anything? If I wanted to host a meeting here, 
uh, is there a fee or blah, blah, blah? Oh, no, we've got a back room. We'd be happy to host you. Um, you know, how many people do you have? Great. We, we normally require X, Y, and Z for that. You know what? You guys are, are, are education. It's free. You're not charging anybody. We'll, we'll do $6 a plate or $8 a plate ahead. Is that OK? And you know, drinks are you know, a la carte, whatever. Sure. Oh, and we have a projector and a PA system as well. Do you want to use that for free? And so there are opportunities. You just have to go off and find them. You just have to have the conversation with the, the local you know, uh, businesses. Because honestly, for them, it's marketing. They did something for free for you. Number one, they get to write it off. And number two, they get better promotion. Because I'm standing up here talking about how great Domino's is, right? And we thank them at every meeting. And we say, do you want us to hand out coupons? And oftentimes they will. And so flyers, whatever it is, we're happy to do that because they're helping us out. So as long as you're willing to go that extra mile, put their logo on your website if they ask for it or whatever, one more thing. Um, the last thing is uh, incorporate your user group. We did this in New Hampshire just before I left. Um, it requires some work. You know, uh, I don't have all the details on it because Jim, who uh, now uh, with Julie runs the New Hampshire SharePoint user group, uh, did all the work for that. But it really wasn't that difficult to go off and do. There's a bank account. So when we did things, we'd get sponsors. We actually have all of that ability to actually have money sitting in the bank. Um, we, at, in the San Antonio community, we didn't get a chance to incorporate before we ran our SharePoint Saturday. So we went and I called up the, the folks who run the Dallas SharePoint user group and said, hey guys, um, do you mind? Would you help us out? Could you host our bank account for us and let us leverage what you guys have done? And they said, absolutely. We've done all the work already. There, there's, there's no issue there. We'd love to, to help you out. I mean, heaven forbid you think that a community person is going to say, absolutely, right? Talk to your local other community user groups. See who has done this already. See if there's synergy between user groups that you can have. Somebody may have already done it locally. Okay? Um, that's the, the end of my tips and tricks. I want to hear from you. Uh, so I'm going to come back here to uh, the first slide here. Who are you? Why are you here? What are you doing here? What's, what, what are you doing with user groups? So I have a handheld mic I can run out, and we also have the ones in the center. Hi. Um, hi. My name is uh, B.J. Fentress, and um, I'm uh, just I'm here just north of uh, Chattanooga. Uh, we right now we have a .NET user group, a SQL Server uh, user group as well. Mm -hmm. uh, I think the .NET user group is probably the most popular, but we've had a SharePoint user group in the past uh, that's kind of died out and is not meeting anymore. And I, I guess that's why I'm here today is mm -hmm. I'd like to revive that group, uh, but I'd also like to hear a little bit more of your strategies on how to, I guess, how to incorporate the group, uh, and you spoke to this a little bit already, how to kind of keep recruiters out of it, because I think that was probably one of our biggest problems, um, recruiters slash uh, consultants wanting to kind of uh, take it over a little bit like yeah. that, and how do you kind of... Well, I can get everybody you, to play nice. Absolutely. I guess. So I can give you my experience and some suggestions. I'm going to sit here because I don't want to be, you know, I want this to be a group conversation. So I don't want to be standing above you. That's, you know, I gave you the background slides and, and my thoughts on that stuff. So at this point, I really want this to be a conversation. So I'm just going to sit down here and hopefully we can, you know, take, take the I'm a speaker thing out of it. We could just all be user group leaders and have a conversation. So the, the things that I personally like to do around how do you get recruiters out of it? is don't get recruiters out of it, but give them their container, right? So one of the things that we've done is we've got a whiteboard in the room, and we write some stuff at the top of the whiteboard in San Antonio. It's what things do you want to hear about? Uh, do you want, what things do you want to speak about? And are you looking for a job? Or, and do you have job openings? Four sections of that board. The recruiters come in, they write really big and pretty all over the board with their name and their phone number and who they work for. And then when we do the pizza time, they have an opportunity to come out and, and, and network. They never get a chance to come up and speak unless they're sponsoring. If they're sponsoring, they get their three minutes at the front end. Beyond that, it is a user group. It is run by us, not by anybody else. We don't, you know, when I walk in the door at the user group, I wear a Rackspace shirt, but I lay my badge down at the door. I am Jason Himmelstein. I am a SharePoint guy. That's what I'm here for. 
you know, you, you, you don't hear me doing a sales pitch in any session I ever do. Uh, and I don't ever, you know, you, you have to be able to put it down. It can't be owned by one person or one company in order for it to be successful like that. You know, we've seen that be problematic where somebody comes in, they want to do a half an hour at the front end. It, it's, it drives people away. So if you can give them and say, look, the people who paid for the pizza, we gave them three minutes to talk at the front end. Is your pizza worth three minutes of your time? Cool, let them have it. If you don't want to talk to them, tell them to buzz off when, you're, when they come around to say hi and shake your hand. It's great to meet you. I'm happy at my job. Please leave me alone. There, there's nothing wrong with doing that. But by, putting them, by allowing them a space to put their stuff up, whether they're sponsoring the meeting or not, anybody can list whether they have a job. I always write my name up there. You know, we're, we're always hiring for stuff, right? If I'm looking for a job, it's really nice. I can put my name up on the board and those recruiters can come around and find me. I'm Jason, I'm in the black shirt, kind of bald and fat, find me. They come around. It's, it, it makes it so that it's not, their, their, their high pressure sales tactics kind of go out the window at that point because they've been given an avenue. You put them in their container and they don't inf you know, uh, infect the platform anymore. So that's the way that I've done it. And the other part of your question was uh, about incorporation. Um, there are, we hemmed and hawed for a while. Julie, do you remember which kind of incorporation it is? I don't remember either off the top of my head, but if you send me an email, uh, I'm happy to find out from Jim what we went with. Uh, there are a number of different groups out there that have done different ways. Um, you know, they've, I've seen people go the nonprofit way. I know Dan Usher uh, with the DC groups has a not-for-profit. I know the Philly group has done, you know, these are all SharePoint groups I'm talking about, uh, have done that. Um, and one of the things that I've seen, uh, you know, SharePoint is an awesome topic. It's a lot of fun. It's what I love to do, and I love to talk about it. Um, I fly to Redmond every six or eight weeks just to go out there and hang out and talk to the product teams. It, it's my hobby. It's my work. It's my passion. But for a lot of people, they've started to move into Office 365 way more. And so as a part of that, we've started to look at it and say, well, SharePoint Online is SharePoint. So we've broadened the topics to be Office 365. And if we get somebody who comes along and says, I'd like to talk about Exchange. Okay, cool. We'd love, you know, we, we make sure we publish it and say, hey, this, this, this go around, we're gonna talk about the interworkings of Exchange Online with the Office 365 suite. You know what, we haven't seen it drop off. People still come because it's, well, you're gonna talk about how this plays together and, uh, and how the, the, the thing plays in with groups, which SharePoint is now a part of. Really cool, neat, okay, let, let's hear what you have to say. So we've seen people come out for those topics almost more. So we've seen a lot of SharePoint user groups switching over to be SharePoint and Office 365. So but you, if you're gonna do that, you kinda have to embrace, you know, if somebody wants to come and talk about Skype for Business and they're willing to give you their time for free to come and talk about it, okay, let's see where you go. No problem. Yeah. Here. We can hand these around. Thanks. No problem. My name is Fred Bear. I work for Hennepin County, Minnesota, uh, the SharePoint Information Architect. I run two internal user groups, one for the site collection administrators and one for the site owners. And I'm interested in hearing more about how to grow these groups, nurture these groups, and build them not only from, from my work, but from the inside. The differences between the two currently, site collection admins is really just a, a monthly meeting. I'm going to be moving that more towards a meeting and training topics, whereas for site owners, it's a 90-minute meeting once a month, informational with an hour-long hands-on lab with deep dive topics. I've, I'm the one that mainly surfaces, that does the, the training. I surfaced needs and questions and wants with surveys. I'd also love to hear how to get more folks involved in, in teaching and training. It's kind of a sit there and, and absorb type audience. Hi, 
Hi, my name is Hermine Turner. I'm from Detroit. I'm the president of the Detroit IT User Group. So we're a general IT user group, but I also, for the uh, workforce development and education uh, program that I work for, um, I do their professional development. So I found that bribing helps for internal people. Uh, I make sure that they all get certificates when they attend the, the training that I, I put together. And, they, and I keep candy in my classrooms. <laughs> but for my user group, um, I don't know if you can answer this. We've been, we've been active with Microsoft as a sponsor for like nine years. We've got about 200 IT Pro members, but we're general IT, which means that we can vary the topics, which brings a lot of people in. And um, we've got really good sponsors. But I need to know what Microsoft is going to do about our Office 365 um, sites for user groups. Every year I'm going to panic, not knowing if they're going to continue it or not. And right now, three months out of a quarter, we meet online. Then we meet on site once during the quarter. So the Office 365 subscription that they provide to user groups or had been providing is critical for us. We don't charge dues. So if we don't get that, we have to rethink how we're going to meet. The other thing is the technicalcommunity.com site is like a desert, <laughs> you know. At one time, we had a really good user group site. Uh, we could get some speakers. Having the Office 365 allowed us to get speakers no matter where they were, because they could just come in over Link or Skype. Um, now, the, the thing that's uh, questionable is technicalcommunity.com doesn't do anything uh, when we have special events, because we don't ask for sponsorship all the time from them, uh, but we don't get sponsorships. We have uh, community initiatives that one of them, we bring in middle school students and do a coding day with them that we host. But again, we don't have dues, so um, we want to have some sort of way to keep Microsoft and other sponsors involved. So what's going on with them? I'm going to have to undress in front of you guys now here because they stays tucked in. So, woo! Batman dance. Here we go. All right. So from the internal user group perspective, um, there are two, two things I've done personally uh, with customers. Um, Rackspace has an internal user group uh, that has been going for a long time. Um, I am not in our office often enough. <laughs> to actually be there. Uh, I've been traveling the globe for the past year. I've been to Australia and the UK way too much and in my own house a lot less. <laughs> um, and I think that, maybe that, they, that happens. All right, so we're just, I, I'm going to stand now. Um, so from an internal user group perspective, uh, what I've seen work at customers, because I've gone and helped them set up user groups uh, and run user groups, um, bribing them, I completely agree, is a great way to go. Um, lunch, ha ha providing lunch for people to come it, it has worked for years uh, because everybody likes a free lunch. Uh, and the, when they can learn something as well, it's even better. Um, you know, trying to do brown bags, I, I have found you know, asking people to bring their own gets a little insulting. You're asking me to come to you know, this user group thing and I have to bring my own lunch and 
you know, now I have to go heat it up and everybody's having sm have different smells. Ugh, it gets a little much for some people. Um, but if you provide lunch, you know, even if it's, we're gonna provide salad and sandwiches, that's perfectly fine, or you know, ice cream in the afternoon. Forget lunch, just go out and get a bunch of ice cream sandwiches and say, hey, come for an ice cream break for half an hour, come here and learn something, right? Vary it up, it's not just, you don't have to just go for a, for a lunch type of thing. The other thing that we have found that has worked um, is virtual. Make it something where uh, it's gonna be online. You know, if you have Office 365, use Skype for Business. And say, just jump on, you know, we're gonna do this. Uh, whether there's one person or five people that come, or 500 who come and, and wanna join in, everybody go on mute, and that way, you know, when we get to the Q&A, we'll take everybody off mute, and you can have your webcam on and, and have the conversation. Then, if you're a geographically distributed company, it's even better, because right? you're getting people together. Okay? They have it on their calendar, they can have it scheduled. It's something that telepresence makes life a lot easier from that perspective. So doing that from an internal perspective can actually really help. Um, we use Skype for Business and a couple of other video uh, products at Rackspace, and all of our conference rooms are video enabled. So people will get together in a conference room and do the same things. So uh, you know, we, we do that. And the other nice thing about it is we also record those. And we stick them in the video portal. Okay, so you keep it for collateral for later, so if they weren't able to make it, you just turn on the recording. It makes life a lot easier. As far as the technical community side of things is concerned, uh, they, they moved us over from the IT Pro Network on Yammer over to the new technical communities, uh, which is on Lithium uh, as a back end. Um, that happened four months ago or so. Um, weren't able to port all the conversations that were there. So yeah, it's a little bit of a desert. Um, you know, right now, uh, they had a big presence here at the show trying to get people to join in and have the conversations there. Um, make sure that you're telling them what you think of it. Um, the only way that we're gonna have the conversations there is if people start to use it. Uh, that's the platform that Microsoft is using going forward. It's a better forums product than Yammer was uh, from a public perspective. Uh, there's reasons why they made the decision. They did it very deliberately. Whether I agree with it or not, doesn't matter whether any of us agree with it or not. This is the decision that Microsoft has made, how they're moving forward. We just have to get in there and start having conversations, and you'll see that people will chime back as well. Um, as far as the Office 365 subscriptions, I don't have a good answer for you right now, but what I would like to do is sync up with you and start to champion that forward because I know there are a lot of user groups who have that same concern of how do we do it. I know that there, Microsoft is starting to do a couple of new things uh, you know, for, for on, in the MVP program uh, that is changing the game for us because we do get a free Office 365 subscription um, and they just announced an alumni program that's uh, starting to take place after this next cycle and we will get a year for free afterwards, uh, not just you know, on the, the last day it gets turned off. So I know they have a mechanism for being able to extend some of those things out. So what we can do is you know, I can take it back uh, I'll be at MVP Summit, and I'll we'll sit down with the right people and you know, try and bring that to the surface. The other thing is, is that this is being recorded and hearing this part of the conversation, hopefully I'll be able to ping some people and say, go take a listen to this, because your communities who are out there that you're trying to encourage are feeling neglected and are feeling fear around the things that you're doing. Let's go fix that, because they really want to. They are truly good people and truly want to do the right thing. Um, I can tell you, I, when the New Hampshire group ran for five years, uh, I paid personally for the Office 365 subscriptions uh, out of my own pocket for the first four years that we ran. Um, I did as a tax write-off, I do a lot of community stuff. Uh, the community provides a lot for me, and so I just looked at it and said, this is something I can do. Not everybody has that ability. Um, my wife doesn't know that, so hopefully she won't listen to this recording. Uh, <laughs> It wasn't that expensive of a subscription, but it's just one of those things that we needed it, and I was able to do. So, um, that, that was the free subscription of the 25 users. Yeah, didn't, didn't go 25 <laughs> users. We, we, on, we only had three. Uh, it was just for the administrators to be able to post things in, and so we, we had that for a while. Um, but, uh, you know, there, there are... There are reasons why they need to do these things. I agree with you. Uh, it needs to not be something we have to be fearful about. So hopefully we'll be able to, to drive some change. So let's sync up after this. Um, so I do have an ask of you. 
In the session, uh, if you go to the online stuff, there's this thing called Second Screen. Go in there, they, that takes you over to the community, okay, the technical communities. This is not for me. Rate this session however the heck you want to, okay? I'm at the end of my week, and I'm enjoying this because I'm having a great conversation with you guys. Give me whatever ratings you're going to give me, but do me a favor. Go in there and put your contact information so that we, after this, can have that further conversation because this shouldn't end here. This should be something that perpetuates. Okay, so if you have something to say, say it in, the, in there as well, because if you're not getting an opportunity, because we only have 45 minutes and I've talked way too much, and we're almost at the end of that time, please go ahead and put that in there, and let's have that conversation through that medium. Start the conversation there around the session, and then you know, if they look at shutting the, the, the session groups down after a while, we can move the conversation into one of the main streams, and one of those should be how to run a user group. Okay, you had a question. Yeah, um, so Jason, could you move forward two slides? Part I can. Things? Awesome. So uh, my name is Jeff Schertz. I'm a longtime Skype for Business, Link, OCS, MVP. Um, I also, me and a team of five guys, we run the Skype for Business user groups, which there's 19 of them in the country right now. Actually, uh, one more, the one that had all the individual details. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I've been brainstorming and have a, a bunch of ideas that I wanted to share, things that we found over. This one? Yes, thank you. No problem. Over about four years. So it started with a couple guys in Ohio, and they had a local group, and they were running Cincinnati, Cleveland. And I, I'm in Chicago and run the group in Chicago, but I never wanted to run the group. So part of it is there's communities that have people that want to have a group, but maybe somebody doesn't want to step up and do all the heavy lifting. So what we found that worked well for us was that us until I joined the board, and now do more work than before, but the idea was that they said, hey, if you just get a room, book a room at a Microsoft location, which we use all the time. And some, some cities, it's 60 days, some it's more or less. But they're great about getting you on the schedule, and it's free space. So MTCs in Chicago, uh, places in Redmond, whatever. Mm -hmm. I mean, even if it's not an MTC, we'll use little offices. So that's a great way to have a consist you know, the consistency that you talked about in terms of it's usually the third week of a month or whatever, and we do our meetings quarterly. So they're not as often, but we're able to spend a lot of time working on the content. Uh, but the idea there is that the local organizers, they just they get the room, they book food, and then they tweet some stuff, and we give them all the content. We deal with the partners and the sponsors, and we provide uh, sponsors the ability to do a quarterly or yearly sponsorship, which we found most do the whole year. Mm -hmm. So that gives us all the money we need to buy food, to do things like we did a bunch of giveaways and we did a party Tuesday or Wednesday night, so we've got money from five or six different sponsors. So we're able to take that, and we grew from two groups to about 19 in the U.S. based on, um, we're a 501c6, which is like a fair trade agreement or something. I, didn't, I wasn't involved in that, but that helped us until you get to a certain point. I think it's like 50,000 in income, and then you have to do more work. Uh, but it's, that's a good, a good problem, because we were able to take that format. And to address one of the things that I heard earlier is, we only create a group where there's a need. So uh, an example is Minnesota has a long-standing group. It runs monthly for business from the link days, and that's kind of run by a vendor. So we have kind of try not to get in those areas. If there's already a vendor that's running one, because the way we work is we say, you want a sponsor, you're all part of it, and everybody gets their turn, and it's your turn this quarter, and then it keeps the sponsors who may be competitors in their own products. It keeps everybody on the level playing field in terms of saying, well, we're all here because we're improving the Skype for Business experience. So we've improved Link. So those are the types of things we've been able to do to, to stay consistent with the sponsors. Have that money coming in so we're able to do things like we moved off Meetup, which how many people here for their groups are using those two sites? Is, that, is anybody doing something other than those two? Like their own homegrown or? OK, so we did that. And the main thing is we built our own site. We used some of our money to pay a developer to create something in WordPress. Uh, the benefit is now we don't have 19 different meetup sites that we have to manage, try to import registration. We do surveys through, um, I can't think of the name of it right now, but that's a big piece is everybody says, here's, I like this, I didn't like this, and we always ask, what do you want to see? And then we concatenate all that information, and then the next quarter we say, wow, a lot of people want to hear about voice or cloud connector or whatever. So we try to use that to drive the content. But we've also noticed that as we've been doing this, the third quarter now, we took a huge drop in attendance. People are like, hey, you guys haven't done a meeting for two weeks because nothing's on Meetup. 
So we're struggling with how do we get off Meetup but not lose people, A, which is going to probably be just going through 500 users worldwide or uh, nationwide and somebody just emailing all of them and saying, hey, we're over here now. We haven't seen you in a couple months. Um, but the other piece is how do people that don't know about this find us? Because we have a website, we tweet, we do that stuff. But I think Meetup is kind of one of the fault places. So if anybody has any comments on how you get users in your area if you're not using Meetup, because running Meetup and our site concurrently seems like not an ideal solution. Yeah, and, and that's a, you know, we, we, I, I've run into that as well. Like, once you get in bed in, you know, in one of these, it is difficult to extract. If you have a domain that people go to, direct. So at the start, it gets that, that way. So you have, you know, your, your mydomain.com going to your web page, but you also have it, you know, uh, where there's embed to be able to do the meetup, you know, signups there. Uh, for you guys, you're, you're trying to do something a little bit different, which is, you know, uh, that's awesome. I, I don't know many communities that are able to, because you guys are a rather concatenated uh, community being in the Skype for Business space. Um, but it, when, where, with some of the broader communities, it does get a little bit harder to, to do that. Being able to embed those registration pages into your website. Um, and the, the only thing I can think is to be able to, to cross-pollinate the, the data in as well, uh, of being able to pull, you know, do, do an API pull out of Meetup. I don't know if that's possible or not. So um, this gentleman has a comment. I'm good with switches uh, from earlier. Uh, another thing I suggest you do, I, I've done this with other organizations I'm in, print up a bunch of business cards with the information, the web addresses and all that, and have the other member, the, the members that attend, take some and give them out to their coworkers also to get the word spread out. And it's a, a tangible, tactile reminder. Nice. We've been giving those out on the, on the floor. But Very like cool. you said, it's, it's a specialized user group, so right. most people find it through the community. It's yeah. more of an issue. Of, so, yeah. I mean, and, and, and part of it is, you know, it depends upon, you know, your, so you're doing it for a multiple geography. Most user groups are, you know, a single geography where you're trying to just find people in your own local community. For you, it's a bigger. We still have that problem, right? Yeah. For local organizers, we kind of, the onus is on them. The, you know, we kind of we say here's the content. You don't have to worry about that. We'll get we'll deal with the sponsors if if Plantronics is presenting. We'll make sure they have representatives there and nobody gets left out. Yeah. But your job is to, to try to get your local people. Mm -hmm. And we have cities that Silicon Valley one. I'd say 90% of our attendees work for the vendors, right? It's just yeah. some areas we just have issues that are specific to that yeah. that locale. So, so something that I've seen that has worked um, is uh, again it comes back to bribing. It really does um, of you know, bring a friend and get entered for a raffle, kind of a thing. So trying to broaden the, the community. So, you know, if you, in order to get one person to go, you have to tell five, right? So we'll put it out there, it's something where, hey, if, you, if you're coming to the user group, you know, you know have, have a field that says who referred you, and then that person gets entered into a raffle for that particular, you know, every six months, you do a raffle for something cool that, you know, you, you're able to pay for with sponsor money. Um, we've seen that work in certain areas where, you know, people will bring other people specifically, hey, I know you're interested in this, but it helps them have an incentive to sp help spread the word, and it's not just a, uh, uh, because they want to come. Um, so I, we're kind of over time at this point, and I apologize that we didn't get more time to do this. Um, I guess next time we should make this a long, you know, I'm going to ask them to do a different format. Was this useful for people? I'm just kind of curious, is this, hear, hearing some of the pains that other people have around this, Okay, I wasn't sure if it was going to be, yeah. I, I, sorry. No, it's okay. I'm I'd probably, around, so. if you could, do two. One for external user groups, mm -hmm. one for internal. Yeah. Because there's different challenges for both. Absolutely. Um, you know, this is, this is a topic that, you know, as you can see, uh, granted, it is Friday. And this is about three times the attendance I was expecting to get at the very end of the day on Friday. Uh, so thank you guys for coming. I mean, honestly, we're, we're, we're passionate about this, otherwise we wouldn't be here. Right, so thank you for, for taking the time. Please connect with me, um, you know, send me a note. Go into that second screen. Go in and, uh, and take part in the conversation. It's the only way that we're going to help each other. If you can't find people to talk to, 
you know, it makes it really hard. So go in there, obviously a group of people, if you're here, you're willing to spend 45 minutes, take the extra 45 seconds, go in, put your contact, let's start the conversation over in, uh, in the technical communities group. So thank you guys very much for coming and putting up with me and uh, have a great day, have a great rest of Ignite. Thank you.